Hi there, it's Ron Gula. Today we're going to talk about my top five favorite Star Trek hacks. Yes, there's been hacking and computer security issues and a wide variety of Star Trek things out there. So I'm Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures. Let's get it to it. So my fifth favorite thing is that there's a show called Discovery, which is sort of yet another reboot of Star Trek on Paramount where a ship called Discovery, which could just zip around the universe, it doesn't even need to do warp, it just kind of just disappears and appears, they encounter a probe, and the probe does SQL injection attacks. Now, that's great. That's a pretty much a direct example of, uh, of, of hacking, but, you know, you could call it sloppy writing from, uh, from the writers, or maybe, you know, we're still going to have SQL injection attacks, you know, in the 23rd, 24th, 25th century, and uh, and that's really interesting. Of course, this also means that uh, the blockchain is dead in the future as well. Number four, the first Star Trek major motion picture involved uh, a large probe called called Viger that uh, that comes into the universe, comes into our solar system. Uh, the Enterprise goes out to to meet it, and they actually go inside the ship. It's that big, and they land and they walk over to it, and lo and behold, it's sort of like a Voyager space probe where. You know, the letters of Voyager kind of rubbed off and these aliens just called it called it V'ger. And this particular movie has just tons and tons of cyber goodness in it. There's questions about artificial intelligence. What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be a machine? What does it mean to be intelligent? And this is probably one of the best science fiction Star Treks that are out there. Now, a lot of people don't like it because it's a little bit of a yawner, uh, but it's uh, it's a lot of uh, a lot of fun. Now, I've got a tie for number three. Uh, we have two different what I call logic attacks, uh, both, uh, you know, really leveraging Captain Kirk here. Uh, so the first one is the M5 computer is installed to the Enterprise to do combat control. And it's it automates a lot of things that are on the Enterprise. And when it goes into simulated combat, it actually kills some other ships. It goes way beyond what it's supposed to do. And Kirk convinces the computer that because it harmed other people, that it should shut itself off and turn itself off. Very, very uh, logical. Similarly, they end up encountering Nomad. Nomad is a probe that uh, was sent out by, uh, by, the, by the Earth. It met an alien, it got modified, and it's now looking for perfection. And unfortunately, it thought that the humans are not perfect, so it starts kind of uh, you know, getting rid of them. And Kirk basically says, because the, the Nomad mistakes Kirk for its creator, it's it, he convinces Nomad that he's also flawed and not perfect, therefore he should, you know, basically destroy himself. Uh, two different examples of using extreme logic, and uh, I kind of consider those great, you know, great hacks. Now, another big thing that happens throughout all the different Star Treks that just I always kind of find interesting and, and not, not so interesting is that anytime they self-destruct or, or do something, it's pretty much a voice activated code. There's a classic sequence where, uh, Captain Picard is going to have to blow up the Enterprise and he says, you know, just start sequence one, code one dash one, alpha, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's really interesting that those codes are pretty short and they're also voice activated. And, you know, I don't really think that that is that secure of a thing that you should be doing to, you know, to destroy a ship like that. And also in every other episode, this guy data, He's like just spoofing everybody's voice, you know, whenever it needs. And this, this happens all the time. In the most recent Picard, the Borg Queen just like totally spoofs voices and stuff like that. So it's, it's interesting that I think those things are, uh, are, are in there. Now, my favorite, favorite hack of all time with Star Trek is, of course, turning off the Reliance shields with a short code. Now, of course, in Star Trek II Wrath of Khan, uh, Khan takes over the Reliant. He gets close to the Enterprise. He comes in. They think they're friends. He attacks him. And when the Enterprise is crippled, the Enterprise uses their command bridge console to turn off the shields on the Reliant. And if you look at this, the way they do it, they've got, you know, nine through zero right there. And they're putting in five different codes. It's like one, six, three, nine, nine, zero. But the way it works you can only do one digit at a time. And this has always kind of concerned me because if you think about it, you know, the first digit you have, there's 10 digits and there's only five more digits after that. So then there's nine, then there's eight, basically about 30,000 
you know, combinations of potential uh, codes to turn off the other ship's shields. This is not very secure. Now, maybe, and of course, there's no, you know, Starfleet manual that we're looking at here. But I always wondered, you know, is this sort of a near field thing? Could they have done this from across the universe? And of course, if you compare that to a modern password, you know, an, an eight character password, uh, when you think about characters and letters, uppercase and lowercase, you know, you've got billions of, of, uh, of combinations there. So I hope this was interesting to people. If you want to learn more about uh, cybersecurity information and, and uh, see what's out there, you can visit us at uh, gula.tech and watch out the rest of our videos here on, on this channel. Thanks for watching.